Hello again, do-it-yourselfers. Terry Peterman, the internet electrician, and welcome to another one of my video shorts on current topics. So today I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration on how to add in one of these old work boxes. So I'm going to use my demo board here with this little piece of drywall I've got on. And I'm going to show you three different types of old work boxes. And what those are is something that you want to cut in a, an outlet box after the drywall is installed and you're not sure where the studs are and you can't really get into the stud to screw the box on. So what you can do is clamp a, an old work box or a rework box into that drywall. So I'm going to show you three different types today. I'm going to start with this one. It's a, a metal box with these tab ears. And I just found this the other day, some rework box brackets for a, this type of a box with ears. So we're going to start with it because the hole is the smallest I need to cut for it to work. This is the first time I've either seen these brackets or noticed them before. Maybe for just lack of not looking for them, but I've never used these before, so we'll see how they work. Then we'll move on to one of these drywall easy boxes, I like to call them. The hole's gonna have to be widened out a little bit more for this one. I like these. They're very, very secure when they're stuck in the drywall and clamped in tightly. What I don't like is they're fairly small inside, so you don't have a lot of room for wires. So probably a two wire cable in and a two wire cable out is plenty for a box of this size. And then the third type is my favorite. All I have for you to show is a plastic one. This is from Carlon and this is a, a low voltage device bracket. So there's no box on it, but this would be exactly the same if it was a full device box that was all enclosed. Same principle these little tabs come out and clamp into the drywall. So we'll show you that, just a, a way to show you the plastic rework boxes. But first, let's get started with device and device box and example number one. All right, so we'll start with this one with the ears. First thing you wanna do is make sure it's level, of course, and then mark out the opening you need to cut. So somewhere between the studs, you can use a stud finder to find that opening. Of course, here on my demo board, not an issue. So there it's level. Using a pencil, I just trace out the opening I need. And then we'll cut that out with my oscillating tool. All right, now again, to cut this hole in the drywall, you could carve it out with a utility knife, but that's slow and tedious. You could use a keyhole saw, something like this, or an oscillating tool. Recommendation, oscillating tool. Once you've got your hole, you can just test fit. You're gonna have to do a little fine tuning. Forgot to carve out for these little humps on the box, so we'll do that. And then we've got to turn these brackets over so that they are on the outside of the drywall. So I'll just mark where those humps are on the box. I'll probably just use my utility knife to trim those out. All right, now I've turned over those tabs so that they're gonna be out at the front. Turned over one side, we gotta do the other. There's the box installed without the brackets now. All right, so now we gotta put the brackets in. Okay, so here's how these go in. I had to look carefully at the diagram to see how that works. So what you want to do is work these into your hole that you've cut on each side of the box. And then in goes the box. These are not the easiest ones to work with. You got to keep those from falling inside the hole. As you push your box in, I've got the luxury of getting behind here. These aren't my favorite, I'm going to tell you right now. Okay, so very difficult to push that box in and not lose your brackets, but you can see there on the outside of the box, grabbing onto the drywall in behind here. Now you just push your box in tight and bend these around back inside the box. Of course you don't have access to the back of it like I do, so these are not an easy bracket to work with, but there it is, installed. Bend those tabs in nice, and there is your box firmly installed in the drywall. Again, not easy because you got to keep those brackets from falling in 
behind the drywall as you're pushing that box in. You might want to do yourself a favor and make the hole a little bigger than I did. So there's a close-up of that box. You can see the tabs bent inside. Then the outside of them are running up and down on either side of the drywall here. And the tabs keep the box from pulling right inside the drywall hole. These are a rework box bracket from Iberville, the 820D RP. Of course, you have to have a set of two. So I've removed that one. And the box I use there, just for reference, is the CI1104K from Iberville. And any box with the tabs in the ears like that, and no, no uh, stud mounting tabs on the outside of the box, is the kind of box you'll need to use those brackets. I've never used those before today. Probably not, never will. There's so much better options. Much better options out there. This is the Iberville BC777. Dash LRB and this is the kind I like like I mentioned earlier though not a lot of room for wires in there But with these now we need just a little bit wider hole a little longer hole Because you want to have the drywall opening to be just above the screws Just above, below I should say and above the screws here on the top and bottom and then wide enough to fit the box not a lot sticking out on this one to get in the way while you're shoving it in there. Um, little tabs here, but nothing too much to worry about. So what you want to do now is just widen or lengthen this hole a little bit to accommodate this one. So again, you would have marked it out on the drywall, but I know this one needs to be a little bit longer, deeper or longer, higher of an opening. So. Just going to mark that and again using the oscillating tool we'll make it the opening enough to accommodate this box all right with these ones first thing you need to do now before you install it in that hole is you have to back out these clamp screws as far as you can because that gives you the most room i'll show you what that does but back them out just till you're Screw is still grabbing on, but you don't back it out too far that you lose it. Same here on the other side. Back it out as far as you dare. Now these four number six Robertson screws, they are backed out pretty much as far as they can go as well for the installation. Kick those in. And then... This box just goes in the hole. Of course, first you'd open your knockout and put your wire in. So if your wire was fished in out of this hole, it would go in one of these knockouts. Then you work the box in to the hole. First thing you do is tighten these screws. Again, the number eight Robertson. Eight driver, red Robertson we call it in the trade. Now what happens there is when you bring those clamps down, they, they act as a cable clamp, but as well they push the box top and bottom down horizontal so that now these are sticking straight out and you just take a number six Robertson and tighten all four of those in until it clamps the box into place. First you push it in nice and flush. I like to use my drill for this, but we'll use a screwdriver all right, just so I don't over tighten them for the demonstration. Just go around and tighten all these a little bit at a time. Because as you can see, when you pull one tight, it just pulls that clamp in against the drywall. So if you don't go a little bit on each screw, you get too far ahead of yourself. And just go around, snug them all up. Now these boxes are Pretty much the best as far as secure in my mind for getting a nice secure device box install clamped into the drywall. So for a receptacle, something that you're going to be pulling a plug in and out of a lot, these are very nice and solid. They're not going anywhere. So that's the BC777 from Iberville. Alright, and the last one I'm going to show you is the plastic line of boxes. 
Now this one is, like I mentioned, just a low voltage device ring, but if this was all enclosed in as a device box, same principle. You see these tabs, once you shove that into the opening and you start turning in these tabs, which are Phillips screws, these little wings flip down and flip up and clamp it into the hole. So we had to mark this one now, make it a little bit wider to accommodate it. Just got to do a little fine tuning with the utility knife. All right, so make sure the tabs are in. Like I said, if it was a device box, they would just go up against the sides, top and bottom of the box if it was a fully enclosed device box. Put that into the hole, into the opening. Snap it in tight. And then with the Phillips driver, for this one I am going to use my screwdriver and my cordless drill. Now of course you won't have the luxury of reaching in behind your drywall, but I've got it to support this piece because it's just for demonstration purposes and if I don't I'll break it. So there you go, the little wings are clamped onto the back of the drywall and that box, that low voltage ring is firmly in place as would be a full plastic device box. So that concludes this video short, short on just installing some old work boxes into a piece of drywall. Three different types to use. Like I said, the first one, I do not like using that box with the ears and those brackets. That uh, definitely not the best method. The second one, of course, this type of box, the drywall easy box, we used to call that. And the last one was the plastic device box and an old work box. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. Just a quick short one to show you a couple little tricks of the trade. Terry Peterman, the internet electrician. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, please. Like this video and click on that notification bell so you'll be the first to know when I release a new video. Thanks again for watching.